Welcome back, everybody, to Sneakers and Stogies. I am your girl, Damo Did That, producer of Sneakers and Stogies. Everybody got to do their 2020 wrap-up of their favorite music, but because I had COVID-19, if you guys seen our previous episode, if you have not, go back and check that out and then come right back. Um, I wasn't able to do mine, so Jake was still gracious enough to let me do my top five. So before I actually go into the, my top five, I need to let you guys know my style of music. I am more of a neo-soul type of um, R&B listener, but I do like a little ratchet music. So you're going to see when it comes to me naming my um, albums. So number five, Chi Lumbo by Janae Aiko. Super great album, really great instrumentals, and also the, uh, the, the, the deluxe edition of that album was great as well because she did the No BS remix with Kalani, and to me, it's just as good as the um, No BS version with her. She also had um, 24 Hours with Nas, and that still to this day is probably my favorite song that came out last year because it reminds me of my grandmother. Um, the album was actually dedicated to her father, so a lot of the songs on there talk about like being really close to a loved one and then possibly losing that loved one. So that is why Chi Lumbo um, makes, this, makes this list. And also, Janae Aiko is one of my favorites. Now, number four. Amusing Her Feelings by Division. I had to show some love to the fellas in this list, too. I'm not going to be just strictly just all females, even though I could have went there. But Amusing Her Feelings is actually a really good album by Division. I love In Between Us with Division and Snow Allegra. I like... Um, Division is just really good R&B music. Like, if you guys are looking... If you fellas are looking for a new artist to, like, have around your ladies, you want to get Division. Number three, I Have Good News by Meg Thee Stallion. I know y'all shocked. Good News was not my number one album of 2020. However, I'm not going to sit here and act like it wasn't a good album. Good News had a really good song with uh, City Girls on there. It's called Do It On The Tip. I'm going to keep it PG on this uh, video today. So, <laughs> oh, I don't have to keep it PG? Okay, so Do It On The Tip to me is like a more ratchet. WAP is already ratchet, but I just feel like Ever since rap WAP came out, that's just the new trend that's gonna keep going on. We're gonna not even a new trend because they've been doing it for a while, but it's not going anywhere, and it's gonna do nothing but keep getting more and more in you guys' face. So stuff like do it in the tip, like just like I'm not even gonna y'all know I be ranting and going. Keep me on track, Jake. <laughs> no, keep on. My bad. So has do it on the tip. She also has a song on there with SZA, which is major because SZA actually took about two years off from music. And now she's starting to have more music come out. And this feature with Meg Thee Stallion, to me, was really smart. And then also she has Cry Baby on there with the baby. Meg Thee Stallion times the baby is, it equals a hit, like, regardless. And also, following what happened with Meg Thee Stallion in the Tory Lane situation, I felt like the way she handled it with good news was the best way that she possibly could. And it gave me a very, like, old school Tupac hit em up feel when she was uh, going in on Tori, so I really like that, because I'm a little spicy myself. Number two, Meet the Woo 2. That is my second favorite album of 2020. Shout out to Pop Smoke, rest in peace. I did not make this album number one for the simple fact that I didn't really become a Pop Smoke fan fan until after he passed away. So I wasn't able to appreciate his music until after he passed away. But Meet the Woo 2, to me, was better than a lot of albums that came out last year. And that is why I gave it number two. And also, most of the songs on there... Oh, sorry, I, get, I got distracted. I was looking at Jake. Sorry. Most of the songs that are on there are still ch chart top. I'm uh, sorry. Most of the songs that are on there are still chart topping to this day. And I feel like some of those songs on there could be timeless. Like, Rest in Peace, Pop Smoke. Number one... My favorite album of 2020, and it's still my favorite album to this day, Ungodly Hour by Chloe Halley. Ungodly Hour has about two, it ranges from R&B, pop, neo-soul, and then they try to even put their own little hip-hop um, feel in there. And I love Chloe Halley because they have their own sound. They don't try to sound like anybody else. And they're not little girls anymore. They have songs like, I wonder what she thinks of me. It's a song about, I wonder what your chick is thinking because she's not me and you want me. And it sucks for her, not for me. And then also they have another song called Love Me at the um, Ungodly Hour. To me, that song just basically shows like, you can love me when you see me 
in my perfect state, but you need to love me in my ungodly hour too because I'm not this perfect girl all the time. I just feel like ungodly hour is the perfect album for girls who try to uphold a certain image to the world, but in real life, we have bad days too. And the same way you appreciate me on my good days, I need you to appreciate me on my bad days. And that is why I totally appreciate the ungodly Albert. The ungodly album by Chloe and Halle. Honorable mention, Fifi by Kiana Lede. Kiana Lede is one of the most slept on R&B singers currently. And her album with Fee, her album Fifi is amazing. My favorite song on that album is Forfeit featuring Lucky Day. That is an amazing song. That is an amazing album. Kiana Lede, I am so excited to see what you have for us in 2021 because I am going to be the first to listen to it. And yeah, you guys, that is my wrap for 2020.